Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Wyandotte chicken and if they are the best chicken for your flock or if the right one for your flock. Before we get into that, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So the Wyandotte is one of America's favorite hens. Created in the Northeastern US, it is a firm favorite of many homesteaders for its reliability on producing eggs and meat. It has the distinction of being the first American breed specifically bred to be dual purpose. It is a beautifully marked heritage breed. Sadly, it fell out of favor with the advent of industrial farms, but homesteaders and backyard chicken enthusiasts have brought this bird back from the brink of obscurity. So stay tuned to learn all about this chicken, including its temperament, friendliness, egg laying capabilities, and much more. So let's start off with the history and background. The emergence of the Wyandotte breed can be credited to four people, Fred Houlette, John Ray, L. Whitaker, and H.M. Doubleday. These fellows set out to create an American dual purpose hen, something that was lacking in the late 1800s. The original name of the breed was American Seabright, but the bird was accepted by the American Poultry Association. The name was changed to Wyandotte. As named for the Wyandotte Indian nation to honor the help and aid they had given to the first white settlers of the area. The very first Wyandotte was a silver laced variety created in upstate New York back in the 1860s. The second variety was the gold laced Wyandotte created in Wisconsin also in the 1860s. The gold lace variety was created by using a silver lace Wyandotte hen with the gold spangled Hamburg and partridge Cochin cock. They were originally called Winnebago's before the name was changed to Wyandotte. In the early 1880s, the first Wyandotte's crossed the Atlantic to impress the British poultry fanciers. By 1904, the Wyandotte was so popular in England that price varied from 35 to 165 Great British pounds per bird, the price of a small house at the time. Now let's talk about the appearance and standard. The Wyandotte is a large, heavy bird. The roosters will weigh around eight to nine pounds while the hens will weigh in around six to seven. The Wyandotte bantams weigh around 36 ounces for females and 40 ounces for males respectively. It is described as a deep full-breasted bird with a broad frame. It has a large broad head with a rose comb. The general shape has been said to be rotund. The legs are stout and well spaced to hold the heavy frame of the bird. The legs are clean with no feathers and there's four toes to each foot. Their face wattles and combs and earlobes are all red and the beak is horn yellowish in color, tending towards the darker color. Eyes are in orange color. Wyandotte's have a yellow skin as preferred by the American market. The gold lace variety has golden feathers that are laced with black. If you look carefully, you will see whitish central veining in the feather. The Wyandotte was first admitted to the American Poultry Association in 1883 and the other colors followed. So in 1883, the silver lace was admitted. Then in 1888, the golden lace Wyandotte was admitted. In 1893, the black buff and partridge were admitted. In 1902, the silver penciled was admitted. In 1905, Colombian, and lastly, 1977, the blue Wyandotte was admitted. The Poultry Club of Great Britain recognized varieties are barred, black, blue, blue laced, blue partridge, buff, buff laced, Colombian, gold laced, partridge, red, silver laced, silver penciled, and white. The Intent European lists 30 different colors. The APA classifies the Wyandotte as American while the PCGB classifies it as a soft feathered heavy breed. Bantam Wyandotte's were admitted to the standard in 1933. They are difficult to find, but there are some dedicated breeders out there. As far as the temperament goes, it's a generally a calm, docile, and friendly bird. That doesn't mean it will tolerate being pushed around though by other breeds. The Wyandotte's tend to be high in the pecking order because of this dominant streak. They are a bit aloof from the other breeds and tend to stick to their own kind. They tolerate confinement well, but enjoy free ranging throughout the yard where they are avid hunters of bugs and seeds. It's restful to watch them patrolling the yard at a sedate pace. They rarely hurry. Wyandotte's have a really good feather covering, which makes them hardy in colder climates. In warmer areas, they require shade and cool water. They usually live anywhere between six to 12 years if allowed to die naturally. As far as the varieties of Wyandotte chickens, there's several. The original was silver laced variety made by a crossing a silver spangled Hamburg with a dark Brahma. 
white and black sports issued from this pairing also white is the rarest of the wine dope coloring the colombian variety was created by crossing a white wine dope with the barred plymouth rock the gold lace wine dope was originally created in wisconsin by crossing a silver lace wine dope with gold spangled hamburg and partridge cochin the buff was a silver lace cross with a buff cochin the partridge variety can be divided into two separate strains in the eastern states the cross was a partridge cochin with a buff wine dope in the western states it was a partridge cochin with a cornish buff wine dope this is a simplified version of the partridge in reality multiple crosses were needed to obtain the pattern now there's several varieties of wine dope out there like i went through before blue silver penciled blue laced red and even more please note that the crossings of various varieties and breeds here are not exhaustive different sources offer different or more extensive breeding practices much of it being guesswork as far as their egg laying goes and health issues they lay medium to large brown eggs at a roughly four eggs per week they have a fairly strong brooding instinct although this can vary between different strains wine doat hens make great mothers and fiercely protecting their chicks from danger as far as health the wine dote has been described as robust in appearance. It is also robust in health. Rose comb is well suited for colder climates where frostbite can be an issue. There's no specific ailments noted for this breed. The usual assortment of ectoparasites can be expected since this burr has pretty dense feathering and the rear end may need some feather trimming at times. So is this the right chicken for you? The wine dote is a breed well suited for homesteading or the backyard of a suburban family. They enjoy being fussed over and are known to be child friendly. They are dependable layers of eggs through the winter, it is said, and also round out to a decent size for table fare. Wine dotes are docile, like I said, non-aggressive, although they're not exactly lap chickens and they definitely won't be pushed around by other breeds that are more keen to be a bully breed. Wine dotes are said to be talkative and noisy, so this could be problematic if you have close neighbors. They make great projects or 4-H birds since they are calm and affable which is also what makes them a great show ring favorite. The Midwestern states of America and the country of Germany really enjoy showing their wine dotes and the breed usually shows very well winning many awards. To summarize, the wine dote chicken in all its varieties of colors is a firm favorite in many countries around the world, in my opinion, for sheer stunning looks and contrast, the silver and gold lace show the best. The allure of this bird is probably a combination of several things. It's calm, it has a great demeanor and makes it great as a family bird or for the show ring. It's a dependable layer even through the winter months, a reliable brooder setter and a great mother. A stunning array of colors and patterns are also available. So do you keep any wine dotes? If so, what colors? And let us know in the comments section below. That's gonna do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, if it changes your perspective, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends as well. And with that, I hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.